What's up, Anomalies? I know that I haven't uploaded any videos in a while, and I've just been super depressed. Hopefully, I can upload more videos in the future, but if you're new, you don't care about that, and you don't care about me, so let's get on with the video. I never really got the Batman character. Now, I got that he was rich, and I got that he's a hero, superhero kind of guy, but I never got his origin. So I decided that instead of him going to a random mountain in a random place with a random person, and somehow having that make sense later on, I decided to make it a little bit more personal, and make him actually give a shit about the world. So we open up with Bruce's parents being killed, and he's 13 at this time, a little bit older than he is in the films. He's taken into an orphanage for over a year. We see that Alfred is trying to get him out, but Wayne Industries is actually falling because there's a bigger company that's taking over Gotham and turning it into this place called Arkham. But with the sudden drop in money, the orphanage makes a legal case and keeps Bruce. Now you may be thinking, that isn't very, you know, good of them, but that's the whole point. Because you see, after a year, the orphanage sells Bruce to the Arkham School for Gifted Younglings. And for the next four years, he's trained to be an assassin in this school. Because this isn't a normal school. It trains your body, your mind to become an assassin and to become an Arkham's child. Every student is trained slightly differently with a different method. This is to create a large amount of testing and then create the perfect assassin. And the testing that Bruce gets is the bat. Basically, he's trained in physical combat, but he's also trained in being able to fight while not being able to see. Basically, he gains super hearing, almost. And after this four-year monstrous journey of them turning this young 14-year-old into a deadly 18-year-old with the intention to kill, they give him the final exam. He has to kill the student that got the lowest grades that year, as Bruce got the highest grades for the, all of the four years. He basically swept the floor and destroyed everyone. But... He refuses, showing Bruce's iron will that he will never kill. To kill is to admit defeat, that you can't beat the opponent without resorting to lethal violence. So they kick him out. They say, okay, you can legally leave, but we don't want you here. We don't need you here, because this is a place for assassins, not little bitches. <laughs> Now, Bruce leaves and Alfred picks him up. There'll be this kind of scene of this disconnect. You realize that as a fan, you remember Alfred being this, you know, father figure. But he hasn't been able to be a father figure for Bruce throughout these four years. He's been trained and tortured to become this serial killer and he's trying to go against his intent that's been built into him in the most vulnerable time of his life when he's a teenager and his mind doesn't know what to do. So he moves back into the mansion and takes over Wayne Enterprises, which is going down the drain slowly but surely. Arkham owns 20% of Gotham and will soon, estimated by others, be able to buy 35%. There'd be the scene of Bruce looking out on the TV, catching up on everything that happened in the past four years and realizing how disgusting not only Arkham, where he was raised to be an assassin, but this city that he thought his parents loved and, and owned, but it isn't. This city is disgusting. So he takes his training to heart, he grapples with his fears, and becomes what they were trying to make him. But even though he's embracing the name of the Bat, he is refusing to kill, not only as a sign of respect, 
but as a sign of disrespect to the school and proving them wrong. You don't need to kill to win. The film would show a montage, not like an actual film montage where there's poppy hit music, but a slow progression of Batman's suit going from really, really kiddie to high tech. And it would show Bruce's weaknesses and strengths in combat and how he fixes those weaknesses and increases those strengths using his suit. Batman has been fighting for over two months now. He's in the paper and he's kind of got a relationship going with Alfred and he's been set to appear in you know in the Playboy magazine and everyone's gonna be like oh look at Bruce Wayne oh he's so cool oh yeah but he doesn't want any of this fame he just needs the money so that he can continue developing his suit and becoming more powerful but one day when Batman goes out and hears about a bank robbery he comes across a gang of idiots you know fumbling around stumbling and there's one man that's controlling them all and he's wearing a mask that only covers his nose and mouth his name is Bane and Batman is destroyed in this fight he didn't have a shot Bane's superhuman strength absolutely destroys this Batman which doesn't just affect him physically but mentally you see this Batman is extremely aggressive like how the DCU Batman is not quite to that extent but it's the thing that Batman doesn't want to be and he's trying to evolve into this nicer version but at this point remember he's been the top of his class for four years he gets out of that class doesn't even have to kill isn't told to kill and he still defeats villains with ease and yet he comes across someone that destroys his record and breaks him. Batman will fail to beat Bane again and again and again, showing him degrade into this mentally damaged child because that's what he is. He's 18 and yet he's never had a girlfriend. He's, he's never been to school. He's basically this psychopathic, mega antagonist that doesn't want to be psychopathic but is he, he wants to save the world but he can't because his brain is too messed up all he's thinking is killing and killing and killing and this might mess with some fans of batman but Towards the end of the film, Bane might threaten the city with bombs or something extremely dramatic that forces Batman to go full. And probably by accident, he kills Bane. I know a lot of people don't want Batman to kill and this is what, in my opinion, would solidify him as not being a killer, even though he has killed. Because in his eyes, he's failed. Or more importantly, he succeeded. He passed the test that they gave him almost three months ago now. He passed that test. He didn't fail it like he wanted to. He passed it. He killed someone that also came from Arkham School and was stronger than him. He killed someone. And that forever changed him. So he resurrects a statue of Bane in his honor right in front of the Wayne Manor. It's massive and made out of bronze and it's pointing directly at Bruce's window. Every day when he wakes up, he'll look and see his failure. This would solidify the psyche of Batman and that he would never kill again. But this also messes with his psyche because He's failed. He didn't become the hero he wanted to be, a hero that never killed but always saved the day. So he does something that isn't fully mentally stable. He goes back to Arkham as a special guest. I'll just play out the scene for you because it'd be a little bit more fun that way. Bruce enters the scene. He smiles as he walks forward in his nice suit and the teacher claims we have a special guest, Bruce Wayne, and they all applaud him. The teacher says, it's a secret to the public, but Bruce Wayne actually studied here, and he's here to tell all of you what it is to be. Bruce raises his hand. 
and he stops him. Thank you, Scarecrow, Bruce says, shaking the hand of the teacher before turning to the kids. You know, this guy used to bust my balls every day when I was in here. How long have you been here? They raise their hands and say, One year, sir. One of them doesn't. One of them is looking out of the window, and on his shirt is the picture of a robin. We cut to the end of the class, and everyone stands up and walks out of the room, except for this kid. He stands up, walks to Bruce, and says, Hello, my name is Dick Grayson. Bruce says, Hello? Hello, Dick. Uh, my name, well, you know my name. Dick cuts straight to the point and says, You failed the test. Bruce stands back in, in shock. Mock shock. You didn't kill them, did you? Bruce shakes his head. I don't want to kill anyone either, Dick said, his head hanging low. But I want to be strong, like Batman. I want to help the world. And Bruce smiles and says, Hey, one day you should come round. I can introduce you to Batman himself. Dick's eyes light up. And he says, Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. He shakes Bruce's hand and Bruce smirks. Don't call me Bruce. Call me by my school name. The Bat. Hello, Robin. And that's the end of the film. Woo! Look at me. Oh. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that kind of aspect of it. I really want to continue making these films. Maybe we can make a trilogy or some sort. So let's just say if we hit 12 likes on this video, I will make a sequel to this film. Yep. 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 Cock. Yep. Haha. <laughs> yep. Ruse. Pog champ. Yep. Anyway, if you enjoyed, please like, subscribe. It helps out a lot. And of course, make sure to share with your friends. See you in the next life and in the next video. Bye-bye.